afternoon everybody uh, and welcome back to Birmingham Wildlife Conservation Park for the latest in our series of Facebook live videos. We're carrying on our world tour today um, and we are having a look at our pygmy marmoset today and a very noisy golden lion tamarind as well. Um, so yeah, as ever, please feel free to send in any comments or questions you might have. Otherwise, we'll just crack on with the video. So yeah, I'm having to kind of crouch down just to not spook these guys too much. Um, so yeah, apologies for the slightly rubbish view of a pygmy, mom, pygmy mom's head, but he's up on the um, on the nest box there. Um, then obviously we've got this gold flying tamarind having a bit of a shout at us as well at the moment. So in here we've got two pygmy marmosets with our one of our golden line tamarinds. Um, these aren't the only pygmy marmosets we've got on site. Um, we have a number of kind of off show groups of these guys, um, a number of off show breeding groups. Um, but these two are the only two that we've got on the show. Hi Sue, hi Tim, hope you're okay today. Um, I assume the other one's out and about somewhere outside in one of their aviaries. Um, but we do just have the... At least we've got one that we can see at the moment. Hi Mary, hope you're okay. So um, pygmy marmosets are the smallest species of monkey in the world. Um, they aren't the smallest primate because some of the mouse lemurs are smaller. Um, but they are the smallest species of monkey in the world. Um, the two we've got in this enclosure here are around about 12 years old. I think one's at, one is 12 and the other is nearly 12. Um, so yeah, they are... Getting on a little bit now for, for, for pygmy marmosets. Um, they are kind of heading into old age. Um, yeah, maximum weight for these guys is around about 110 grams, so it shows how small they are. Um, and pygmy marmosets are found throughout kind of central South America from Brazil across to Peru through Bolivia. Um, so yeah, they've, um, hello, you're getting in the way. Um, so they do actually have quite a large range um, across kind of central South America. So pygmy marmosets have actually recently been split into two different species. Um, the eastern and the western pygmy marmoset. Um, this is a fairly recent taxonomic split. Um, they used to be classed as subspecies, um, but now, um, but yeah, now they are actually two separate species uh, at the species level. Um, the ones we've got here, I believe, are western pygmy marmosets, um, but obviously it's a bit hard to be 100% sure. Um, Especially with the, the kind of recent the, the the recent taxonomic split, so um, I believe these guys are Western pygmy marmosets. So yeah, the golden lion tamarind is just kind of alarm calling and having a bit of a go at me. Um, that's why why she's very vocal. Um, pygmy marmosets aren't too bothered. When he was flashing his back end at us a minute ago, that was a bit of a warning sign, but. Um, but yeah, now they are, um, now he seems a little bit more chilled out. It's still just the gold having a shower at us. Hi Natalie, hope you're okay today. So, uh, pygmy marmosets have got quite a specialised diet. Um, they mainly actually eat gums and the, the kind of fluids that come from, from trees and plants. Um, along with insectivores, uh, along with insects, sorry, um, as they are quite insectivorous. Um, 
they will also occasionally eat fruits and flowers and, and arthropods and things like that but um but yeah it is mainly kind of gums and saps and things like that from trees um so even though i was saying their range is is quite large um the actual usable habitat for these guys within this range is is a fair bit smaller than that um, and that is one of the reasons that these guys are classed as vulnerable in the wild on the IUCN red list um, they also face threats mainly through as ever habitat loss um, and kind of habitat fragmentation um, but they are also um, taken for the exotic pet trade, obviously being quite small, everyone thinks they'd be a lovely pet to have. Um, and also, um, they are actually used um, as almost kind of target practice by local tribes and things like that. Um, so, so yeah, they do face a number of threats out in the wild, mainly man-made as ever. So yeah, they're just trying to scare me off, that's, that's all they're doing, Tim. Um, like I say, they're not 100% sure of me. Um, don't really see me very often, so I am a bit, bit of a newcomer. That's why I've kind of I'm at this funny angle because I don't I want to make myself as small as possible, just so they're not too spooked. So these two pygmy marmosets have been here for around about 11 years, I believe. Um, they came to us when they were quite young. Um, some of the other pygmy marmosets that we've got here are kind of. Um, more recent additions um, and we've we've bred a number of individuals from these um, from these kind of newcomers um, these two here we, we've got many people they've never bred um, yeah I don't know which one this is um, it's kind of male and female bits all look quite similar in pygmy marmoset have you disappeared now into the tunnel that might be the last we see of a pygmy marmoset but at least we've still got a um, <laughs> still got a golden lion's hammer in here Showing has hopefully a pygmy reappears through the tunnel in a minute, but we will wait and see, see how we get on. Yeah, so our pygmy mom's in this enclosure here, they've got access to two outdoor aviaries one through the tunnel up the top there where the golden lion's hammer is now. Um, but then they've also got another aviary to the other side of the enclosure, um, where the tunnel is behind me. Um, so they've got nice warm indoor space and then a nice couple of aviaries for them to, um, to have a look at, um, to kind of keep them busy, keep them entertained outside. Obviously this time of year they're spending the majority of time indoors, uh, but um, the weather's actually a lot better than I thought it would be today. Um, and we've got some sunshine, so I imagine that's why they're out and about at the moment. Still shouting your head off at me, aren't you? Me? So as with other kind of species of tamarind and marmoset, pygmy marmosets are also quite vocal. Um, they've got a range of little vocalizations that they can um, they can make. And an interesting kind of finding that's been found is that when a pair will pair up, they will actually synchronize their um, their vocalizations, and they'll end up having the same kind of vocalization um, once they've been been paired up um, with each other. Um, so that's quite interesting that, that they kind of literally sing from the same kind of hymn sheet. Um, so it's very interesting that they're able to synchronise up like that. Obviously, kind of reaffirming their pair bonds and things like that, um, making them a kind of stronger breeding pair. Right then. Right then guys, if you've got any last minute questions, feel free to send them in. Um, I think we will kind of wrap up in a minute, just because the big news are gone and this golden line tamarind's not getting any more relaxed, so we will um, we will call it a day in a minute. Um, but yeah, as ever, 
please feel free to send in any um, questions just before we go. So yeah, we'll be um, we will be back the same time next week with the latest in our video. It'll um, it'll probably be another species of um, tamarind actually, um, where we are at the moment. Um, in South America, that's where you find all of our kind of calatric species. So probably be another small primate of some sort. So yeah, they'll use um, kind of a range of calls um, to, to try and try and find each other, uh, Tim. Um, long calls and, and things like that to, to kind of pair up. So so yeah, those those vocalizations are really important um, in in finding um, finding a mate. Obviously being so small in such a big habitat such as the rainforest um, yeah they um they need to, to make these noises to, to find each other <laughs> I do have a cold Mary I've got a jumper on that'll do Alright guys, I think we'll call it a day there. Um, so yeah, thanks for tuning in as ever, uh, and we'll be back again same time next week. Cheers guys, bye.